Now, a team that I don't think needs exactly a rebuild dad, but it would be nice to take them to the next level because yeah. of how big and passionate the club is, West Ham United. Well, we're all going to do a bit of history today because they've never finished above third in the league. Whoa. That is a, that so, is a challenge, that's yeah. That's our challenge, yeah. But also, which I was surprised to read as well, they've only ever finished in the top six six times in their history. That is meant really because of how big of a club they actually yeah. are really. I mean, when we're on the club info page here, I mean, West Ham, you look at their stadium, the infrastructure, the fan base, arguably one of the best in the country. Oh, yeah, yeah. It just seems like it's a club littered with history. Yeah. And we can see they've won three FA Cups, uh, they have been down in the championship in the past, but they've always seemed to find their, their way back to the top division. Well, they've never they've never been lower than the second tier of the British football. So they've never been lower than what the championship is now. That's right, yeah. Any ever. So that, yeah, that's great. Good. I mean, that's good, really. There's not many teams have done that. No, absolutely. They've won one European Cup Winners' Cup, 1965. Yeah. Long time ago. Yeah, it was, yeah. Be nice to give them a European trophy. Definitely, yeah. Well, that's what we're after. Um, bit, bit, yeah. bit of history again. And that was back when the European Cup Winners' Cup was a bit more of than what the Europa yeah. League is now. I've oh, watched a couple of videos there, yeah. and, like, you know, the Cup Winners' Cup arguably was on level. Level, level terms oh, with the oh yeah. with the European Cup for a yeah, long time. If you won the cup in your in your in your country, you were classed as one of the top teams. Yeah. So looking at this team, media predicts them of ninth, but of course they overachieved last season. They've managed to keep hold of pretty much a lot of that starting eleven and, and added to it as well. I think we're quite lucky. We're, big. we're adopting a really good side, I think. Absolutely. And David Moyes is doing a fantastic job yeah. there. Uh, so if we do take a look at the transfers and have a look at their transfer window, they brought in big players like Nikola Vlasic, twenty. Five million pound from the CSK Moscow. Kurt Zuma, arguably their best signing. Yeah. Uh, a monster defender. Really oh, yeah. cannot be cannot believe that they managed to sign him. Really, no. uh, that Chelsea were willing to let him go. He's incredible it's in the game as well. Though. I mean, you'll get better than that. Yeah. No, absolutely. The only thing that really lets him down is his concentration, and composure as a defender. But he is next level defender for for this West Ham team anyway. Yeah. And I have added to that. I've had, I have like brought in some players that I think West Ham, the type of players that West Ham might need. I think they're a little light up top. Yeah, I think I they, say so, yeah. they've got rid of a couple of strikers in recent years. Sebastian Haller obviously was one that didn't really work out, and then he goes to Ajax and is one of their best players at yeah. Ajax. So I've brought in a couple of youngsters because they didn't give me a lot of money. Because really, if if I wanted to go for like Premier League level, who's going to score me goals straight away? I didn't have enough money for no. that. So I've gone to South America, and in fact, I've gone to Mexico as well to find me a couple of attacking players. So I'm going to start off. Santiago Jimenez is a 20-year-old Mexican. This guy probably needs a lot more development than the other guy, uh, but he has that great potential. Yeah. I know he, he has a good potential range. Yeah. yeah, he's still... I mean, five-star potential. Our coaches rate him an only two-star current ability. He does have some strength, like great finishing, good determination, which is all good stuff, and he's very professional personality, or professional yeah. personality, which means he most likely will train well and reach that potential should we give him some games game time. Already a good valuation as well. We bought him from Cruz Azul, 4.1 million pound, and he's got one goal in the two games we've played him so far. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm excited start, by this yeah. guy. I also picked up a free transfer to bolster up that midfield in Fernando, Brazilian, 29 years of age. We like our, our Brazilians. Brazilians. Yeah, we do, yeah. Get him I, in first of all. <laughs> yeah, I think he, he has like great fundamental attributes which will help the team in the long run, like the composure, anticipation, bit of a ball player, uh, who got great first touch, that type of player. So yeah, I mean, he played for the chart. He played in the Chinese league for a few years yeah. after ruining his career, moving <laughs> moving over to there. Because there was a lot of promise when he played at Shakhtar. I remember when he was at Shakhtar, um, there was some like talks of him coming to a lot of Premier League clubs back then. Never worked out, but we finally brought him round. Now, Julian Alvarez is a name that in a couple of weeks time, people might go in, oh yeah, we know about Julian Alvarez. Yeah. Because there is a lot of rumours of incomings to the Premier League yeah. in the January transfer window. One of them being with Manchester United. Mm. And if they, if he's anything like he is on FM, I would love that to happen. <laughs> he is fantastic. So he plays up front predominantly, but he could, he could of course, play across the uh, the front three there in midfield. Now he's only 21, so again he's really young. And he has a lot. He has a great potential. A perfectionist personality, which is one of the best that you can potentially get. Great off the ball, he can hit a long shot. Not very weak. There's not a lot of weaknesses in his game when it comes to going forward, yeah. uh, which I like about him. Argentinian as well. So we picked him up from River Plate. Uh, he's got two goals in three games at the start of the season for River Plate. Then we nicked him for seven million pounds. So yeah, we're not 
buying the world-class players because we don't have the money to start off with no. that. They've pretty much done that, this transfer window. But it's our job to try and build that in the next few years and take West Ham from that sixth, fifth place that they were going for last well, season. Anything above third, we're going for, aren't we? Anything above third would be fantastic. Yeah. So tactically... I went with something that I actually created myself. I've just renamed it. This is basically the save that I use on my stream save, twitch.tv forward slash Omega Loot Gaming. It's my PSV save. This is the tactic I use for that. The reason for that is we don't, like I mentioned, have a lot of strikers. So we've gone for the one up top. We've got Antonio, we've got Julian Alvarez, we've got Santiago Gomez. You can all play up top there. The front two are in behind. I've left it so the assistant manager will pick. But Thomas Suchek, who he's been fantastic. I like him. Yeah. I do like him. He is a really good Mazala. Yeah. Like a fantastic attacking Mazala. And that shows because he's already started off the season very well. One, one goal, goal, one, one assist. assist yeah. 7.2 average rating. Fantastic for that role. And of There's course, best player. we've got Declan Rice. Yeah, what I think one of the main aims for this, if we want success, is to keep Declan Rice yeah. throughout the whole save. I watched him play the other day against Spurs, and I just, I mean, Spurs actually won the game in the in the FA Cup, and, yeah. uh, not the FA Cup, the League Cup, and um, I thought he was outstanding. Yeah, I mean, what people always like misconstrued with Declan Rice, oh, he's a defensive midfielder. Did you see him against? Your, your Spurs. Yeah. He was like taking Everywhere. people on. He's doing yeah. skills inside yeah, the was, box. Yeah. Very talented player. I was player. surprised. He, he, he just appears. You, you see the ball's over one side of the pitch. And then it goes across the other side, and he's there. He's doing a he's doing a challenge, and he's tackling, and he and he releases the ball, and it's gone over the other side of the pitch. And next minute, he's, he's tackling someone yeah. over there again. I think. Where's he? Where's he? I think from? he has such great maturity yeah. for the fact that he's 22 years of age. We've seen him in. I think he was one of our best players in the Euros final. Oh, like the big yes. stage did not phase him no, it whatsoever. When you so, think that was his big, that was his first sort of competitive game. Games, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for England, really, and I thought he'd outstand him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, we're lucky that he's English because he used to be Irish, yeah. <laughs> of course like he played for the Irish Youth Academy but he is predominantly English uh, I think in his in his history he was from England but he had like you know, family members. Um, so yeah, well, so he's been all goal. his career at West Ham, doesn't it? So. Yeah, our main goal is to keep him. Now the two centre backs. There is there is a few centre backs that West Ham have. However, I would rather prefer Diop and Zuma every time that they're available. We can already see Diop has an injury, which is going to be five to ten. But it was knee ligament, so he was out for a few games yeah. already. Uh, the goalkeeper, of course, we've got a couple to be fair, Fabianski, but they've all got they also got Ariola from PSG. So I let the assistant decide that. But yeah, this is basically the tactic that I use on the PSV save it's very standard and it's not too intensive we've got a standard tempo a shorter pass and directness one of the one of the strengths that I think this West Ham team has it's a passing ability yeah I want to keep losing the ball we're being expressive we're overlapping we've got two good full backs in the team with Kufal and Cresswell who can cross the ball really well we're getting compressing, but we're slowing the pace down. And out of possession as well, we're higher defensive line, much higher line of engagement, and we're trigger press more often. So, yeah, I'm excited for this. I think this is going to be a good season for us, and I think anywhere around that f that fifth, sixth, maybe above place in the first season yeah. is a success in the first season. Oh, definitely, yeah. Let's see how we do. Right, so the end of the first season... Ooh. We've matched the highest spot that they've ever finished. Happy with that. In the first season. I and mean, we're some way off beating it. Uh, Manchester United had eight points clear of us in second place. But Liverpool, they ran away with it this year. They only lost one game to us. Was it? So oh, that was good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. What I didn't show was at the the start of that season we were actually top, but it was only three games played. Yeah. We actually had a big win against Chelsea as well. But we'll we'll take a look at we beat some big teams, and in fact, you know, we won twenty five games this year. We beat Manchester United. We beat Liverpool. We beat Chelsea. These massive clubs in England were managing to defeat. So we finished above both Chelsea and Man City, and and your Tottenham there yeah. creeping in the uh, the European spots. So I think this is a great season for us definitely, so far. Yeah. If we look at the Statistics as well, Jared Bowen and Aaron Craswell had the two highest assists. I mentioned the danger of Aaron Craswell. Yeah. Jared Bowen, I rate so highly. Yeah. I think this 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 young lad is very talented as well. Yeah, We've even seen that recently. Yeah. That can rise most yellow cards in the league. Fabianski has been our number one goalkeeper by the looks of it, and he's kept 18 clean sheets behind Allison 25. Uh, so yeah, I mean Jared Bowen even with the second highest amount of player of the matches. That's good. So yeah, individual wise, we've done very well. We've also done really well in the league, finishing in third place, definitely overachieving there. What 
about other competitions though? Because it'd be nice to win a cup. Oh yeah. For West Ham. FA Cup, come on. Well, we won the Carabao Ooh, Cup. Oh, that was close. In the it, first it, season. Yeah, a bit of silver straight away. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we were very unlucky in the Europa League. Oh, PSG. We'll look at that in a sec. So at this Carabao Cup, we managed to defeat Manchester Ooh. City oh, in the final. Win. And not only was it in the final, but we did go 1-0 up very early on, but we pinched it in the 90 plus one minute. Get in. So that's fantastic yeah. with a Fernando goal there in the 91st minute. So we played very well. We played them off the park. If you look at our statistics, that we 18 shots, 12 on target to their eight shots and four on target. Defensively, we were very good. Yeah. So that's obviously what's won us the uh, the competition there, won us the cup. But let's take a look then at this Europa League because this is very unfortunate to come up against a team like PSG who went on and won it against Lazio in the final. That's just annoying, isn't yeah. it? When you see yeah, a team like yeah. that coming into it, I mean, it's not really what you want to see as you're getting drawn in the quarterfinal of the round, you come up against someone like PSG. We already defeated Atletico Madrid. A massive result we, against we Atletico Madrid. 3-1 on there. Pitch. Yeah, that is hell of a result. I know. Hell and of then a result. You I go there and win three one day. I'm not I really think. Honest. I think as well. If we're beating Atletico Madrid, we could easily have beaten Monaco. Yeah. Which meant we go in the final against Lazio, and Lazio have a very good team. Yeah. But then it's all to They'll play for in the they? final. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So yeah, really unfortunate. Only a four two loss. Uh, on aggregate against PSG. Yeah. And what's really annoying is at home, we actually defeated them 2-0. Uh, it was the away leg which done us a 4-0 loss to yeah. a Kylian Mbappe hat-trick. Uh, so that kind of killed us. And they were actually 3-0 up within <laughs> nine minutes. Yeah. And a Messi got yeah, got one as well, yeah. So yeah, it's a bit of a shame. A 2-0 win against Atletico Madrid there in the home leg that we had the second leg after going to Atletico Madrid and drawing one all. Get a goal against Atletico oh, Madrid right, yeah, at their yeah. home ground. We said it was 3-1, didn't we? But it's over the two. Legs, Over the two legs, yeah. 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 So that's, that's not a good result, though, being one each other. 100%. Yeah. 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 Mikel Antonio and Saeed Barana uh, got, in, got in the goals there. So let's take a look at our squad then, because what is quite surprising is if you sort this out by goals, Thomas Suchek has the most goals with 26. What is with this tactic, right, and I found it myself, is this Mazala on attack always finds himself here whenever there's a cross. Yeah. And the amount of crosses that we're putting in and stuff like that, I always find that there's always back post headers or it gets cut across and he's always running in for it. So Thomas Suchek, who has the perfect player traits of get forward whenever possible, things like that, and a rise late in opponent's area, he's always going to yeah, be there perfect midfielder, isn't to it? put it in. Yeah, yeah, not only that, does he, also, he also takes penalties for us, so that's the reason why he is probably the top scorer so far uh, in, in our squad. So that is surprising, but Kurt Zuma was also the second. So we didn't really have a striker who scored. Julian Alvarez what? got himself 16 there. What could we have done if we had a striker? Well, that's it. That is yeah. the thing. I mean, it's, it does look like we were toying around with, too, it? Yeah, with, with two different strikers there. Mikel Antonio and Julian Alvarez both playing a bit of a part there. Uh, 22 assists from Jared Bowen and Aaron Cresswell, like we mentioned already. Uh, fantastic season for both of them. Now, of course, keep your suggestions coming in because we will be putting all the suggestions yeah. that are most commonly uh, asked for in Patreon polls where they are keep voted the for. As well. And then, of course, keep the lights coming. Yeah. Dad, light target. I want to go for 1,200. 1,200. Yeah. You know what to do. Smash that like button. And the comments. Get the comments coming. Now, before we look at our start of the second season, something big happened in the league last season, and that is for Southampton. They had a tycoon takeover. Ooh. It's not very... Ha like, often it happens. No. Especially for a club like Southampton. I don't think I've ever seen them have a tycoon takeover. No. But some man has come in, and he has given them a lot of money. So we'll probably see them start challenging us now, yeah. which is annoying because it gives us another massive rich club. Yeah. Uh, a bit of a chance I like to, to overthrow us. Good, I do good. as well. They're like one of the small sides that I like. To like you root for you see them do well. Yeah, yeah, they always yeah. have bad luck, I feel yeah, like. That's right, yeah. So, yeah, but let's take a look then at our preseason because we have made some signings. Let's take a look at them. Starting off in goal, although Fabianski is fantastic, he is like 36, 37 now. Yeah, yeah. I thought long term future will get Dominic Livakovic in. Uh, he's a Croatian goalkeeper, really good on the game. 9.5 million pounds is a bit of a bargain as well that you can pick up from Zagreb. Good start to the trans window. Daniel Braganka. Now we have a lot of Portuguese viewers, especially from Sport in Porto or yeah. Benfica. We've already done Benfica, don't worry. Yeah. We will be getting round to we'll doing there. Sporting we'll and there, Porto. Yeah. We see your comments, I promise you. In fact, I think Porto is in a current poll right now. Right. So it's down to you Portuguese fellas yeah. to uh, to go over and vote for them and make sure we get to do it. But Daniel Braganca from Sporting is a great po young Portuguese talent, 23 years of age. 
can play in that DM role where Declan Rice was sat last season, mm. or in that set midfield role. And again, like Declan Rice, he has a lot of strengths to his game. Not only is he really good on the ball with good passing and dribbling first touch, but I think he's fairly good off it. 13 for tackling is something that, you know, for a, a young, tricky midfielder is rare. Yeah. And I like that. And that's the reason why I decided to spend the money on him and give him the number seven shirt. And for £16 million, pound, I think we got an absolute steal there. Oh, yeah, definitely, so yeah. that is really good. And I'm absolutely buzzing to bring that in. And in the four games that he's played so far, three, three assists. assists. Right, yeah. And the last transfer, George Bello, uh, American. Well, I don't think we signed an American yet on a rebuild. I no. might be wrong, but yeah. George Bello is a very good left back on this game. And although we have Aaron Cresswell, same situation as Fabianski, I've noticed a decline in his physicals because of his age. Uh, I think he's 32 or 33 now. So I've brought in a young 20 year old left back and he's already decent from Atalanta United or Atlanta United in the MLS 5.5 billion pound it's a bargain to yeah, be honest and he's yeah. he's actually played really well 7.2 yeah. starting off from the two appearances that he's made so highlighted on the right hand side are three well three players that left the club this transfer window starting off with Lanzini he's gone to South Korea a great player and I think in the Premier League and we've yeah. seen a bit of magic from him just the consistency is never there and I think FM shows that as well with a couple of dodgy mental attributes as well. Uh, Angelo Albona, gone to Fiorentina, cashed in on him really, because I mean, again, 34 years of age, getting six million pounds for a 34 year old. Good, you it, have really? to really, and yeah. it's something that I'll reinvest in in the future. And then at the end of this season, well, at the end of the uh, the transfer window, start as it ticked over, Lupus Fabianski left on a free transfer because he was out of contract. And like I mentioned before, uh, with his age of 37 years of age, although he is a very good goalkeeper, I didn't mind letting him go knowing that I could get Livakovic in. Yeah. So if we take a look at our tactic then, this is what we're looking at. And I decided to make a big decision with playing Jimenez in every single game up front because I think Julian Alvarez can play on either wing yeah. and will be very good for us there. And I'm also deciding to play Bello every single game. If Cresswell is going to decline more and more throughout the seasons, why not play George Bello now? Now where he might benefit from the game time yep. instead of him sitting on the bench not not developing hopefully he gets better and then of course Suchek he was fantastic in that role last year I yep. had to keep him oh yeah haven't secured Declan Rice in this role because it's, he's guaranteed to be playing if he is he's available, available yeah. uh, and now that we've got Daniel Braganka it's kind of like well Either of them can play. Yeah. Yeah. Either of them can play in any of those positions. So, yeah, I'm more than happy to leave those open. Now, of course, this is the Qatar World Cup year. However, we've only actually played four games, which does surprise me. A 3-1 victory is how we started it against Leeds. Good result, I think. Thomas Suchek got another two there. A 3-0 loss still to Man City, which isn't great. Uh, we had a player sent off as well, 87th minute. Good draw with Liverpool, though. A very good draw against yeah. Liverpool. Um, so, Vlasic and Kurt Zuma getting the goals. Uh, Mohamed Salah, even one of them was a penalty as yeah. well. But a big win that we expect obviously to win Thomas Suchek and Kurt Zuma uh, a 2-0 win at Craven Cottage London Derby absolutely so at the end of the second season we've dropped down to fourth because your bloody Tottenham came in <laughs> and Sorry. decided to make it a little bit more harder for us uh, Liverpool still winning the league not by as much as what they did. Man United second again on the same points. Yeah. So it's tighter at the top. Liverpool have dropped a few more points, but Tottenham's come out of nowhere. Look at our goal beat difference. Us towards so the end of the season. That's where we've lost it, look. Goal yeah. difference, 28. We had our chances as well. I mean, it looks like, to be honest, we've crept up into that fourth, fourth spot from yeah. the last few games. Uh, it looks like Arsenal kind of give it away to us at the end there. So we, we pinched it with two games to go, pinched that last spot. I don't in mind Europe. That. I don't, I don't mind, mind that no, at no, all. We don't mind that, do we? Don't mind. I mean, and there's a <laughs> lot of like London derbies for, for West Ham, well, yeah. obviously, in the yeah. Premier League. Um, so beating one of them to four spot, but losing out to the other, who kind of, like, it looks like Tottenham secured yeah, a, a top four spot we very were, early on in the season. top of the league at the beginning of the season. Though, yeah. So they, they'd lost a bit of it, really. Is it still Conte at the helm as well? No, Bielsa. Oh, hello. Bielsa. I mean, you wouldn't mind that because you quite like Bielsa, didn't you? I do, but I just get annoyed with him after a while because I think by now he should be able to speak English. I No, he does that on purpose. I know he I does. Know he you does. see him speaking to the players and they yeah. know what he's saying, but whenever he goes to a, a, I just a, think a press he's, conference, he should be able to conference. 
confident enough by now to be able to do it. Yeah. I think, right, he just doesn't want to sack his mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what it is. He's too pro- nice. He's he probably, doesn't want to get... He's probably family from a longer yeah. line, isn't he? His interpreter's like, Come no, yeah. you're getting too good at English. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. So yeah. Conte was out of a job. He was gone. And I'm Bielsa's come that. in and done quite well there. Yeah. Uh, so other competitions then. We're in the Champions League for... It might be West Ham's first time in the Champions League. I dare say it is. They've been on, obviously, European competitions yeah. before. But I don't think they've been in the no, Champions League I don't think League they have before. in the Champions League, no. Because obviously they've only finished third once. Yeah. And that was a long time. Ago. It was a long time ago, yeah. So. so how have we done in these cup competitions? Come on. Well, PSG have yet again done us in the first, first round knockout, knockout, but yeah. this time in the bloody Champions League. I mean, the fact that we've managed to qualify from the group is definitely something that we need to take as a positive. Oh, yeah. Because it's not like we have splashed loads of money. No. We pretty much still had the same team as what we did in the Premier League the last two seasons with two added players and a couple of youngsters. So, I mean, we'll go because the other cup competitions, you know, we That's obviously didn't do very well as well. Yeah, Bayern Munich won it last year. It looks like it's going to be Juve or Liverpool this year. So, if we do take a look at the stages and we go back to that first round knockout, out. Uh, we lost on aggregate 5-3 Five Five after beating them in the first leg. So that's disappointing because they beat us 5-1 in the yeah. second leg. So disappointing second leg there. We'll take a look at that. I want to see the group stages though and see who we overcame and see how we did in that group stage because oh, we had a group of death. That is a very difficult Dortmund group. Dortmund Benfica. Dortmund Benfica and, and Milan. Milan. Yeah. We've done well there. We did really well. And we've made this joint look with AC Milan. Yeah, we could have almost topped it. We were so unlucky it not to top it. went down to the last game because Goal Dortmund difference. had eight points left. Yeah, so that is very tricky. I mean, we beat Dortmund and Benfica twice, 3-1. Uh, and we drew against Milan, 0-0, and lost against them, 2-0. Lost against Dortmund, 2-0, both away games. Yeah. So, I mean, that... It's all about uh, winning your own games in Europe, though, isn't it? That's yeah, what it is. so I, I want to take a look then. at the Champions League then. And basically, I want to see how much of it uh, come down to the wire because yes that last game against Dortmund was the reason why we went through because we beat them 3-2 and it was a big game as well at at obviously our home ground, yeah. the London Stadium, Jarrah Bowen, Kurt Zuma, Craig oh, Dawson, last, of all players. Yeah, the last 10 minutes would have been oh, really yeah. tight because they scored in the 88th minute as well. Exactly, yeah. So, and a draw would meant that they would have gone through yeah. because they were a point ahead of us. We got the three points at the end there. But yeah, I mean, we beat Paris Saint-Germain, 2-0 at the London Stadium again. Jarrod Bowen, Santiago fans, Jimenez. Right? That yeah. That for the fans. But they've done us again. Neymar this time getting the hat trick and Messi putting the cherry on top. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Declan Rice getting a 65th minute. I bet even though it was a consolation goal, I bet he still went mental. Oh, Gotta love Declan yeah. Rice. So, yeah, that's an unfortunate game there. Um, not bad, though, I would dare say. A quarter final against Everton. You kind of expect us to beat Everton, maybe. Uh, Newcastle beat Southampton in the final. We've, Southampton we've already, already won the, the FA Cup three times, but they've got a bit of history with the FA Cup. So they, they played in the first FA Cup final to yeah. be held at Wembley. And they lost 2-0 against Bolton. Oh, right, okay. But the, the actual crowd that was allowed in, in well, the, the, the size of the ground then, but it was allowed to have 127,000. The capacity of it, yeah. yeah. It was 200,000 at the game. <laughs> That's meant to, isn't it? <laughs> but they also, when they, the, they were the last team to win the FA Cup, which I think was in 75, to have an all British side. Or an English side. Yeah, all, all English side, yeah, yeah. sorry, yeah. God, that is that is some fact, really, isn't yeah. it? You think, you know, we are, yeah. I mean, it would never happen now. You don't now. have it. league teams, don't you? No. Let alone play in a final. No, it would never happen now. No. But like even like the 80s, obviously there was a much of a British influence with a couple of Welsh, Scottish players who got better and better as yeah. well. You know, you know, we had a, quite a few Mark Hughes and players like that who were highly influential players. Ian Rush, who were coming from Wales. We had a few Irish players mm. as well. So, yeah, I mean, to go all that way back yeah. for it to be exactly. a fully well, English yeah. team. Yeah. So, yeah, it's quite but impressive. I can also remember watching the 1980, which is the last, I think it might be the last trophy that West Ham won. I'm not 100% sure about that, but the last FA oh, Cup. Oh, then the they won. championship, I think. Yeah, the, the, the last time they won the FA Cup was 1980. And I remember watching the game. They were a Division 2 side, and they played against Arsenal, who was Division 1 side, which then was, oh, the, right. which is the highest league. Yeah. Um, and they beat Arsenal 1 0 with, a, a, with a, the only goal being scored by Trevor Brookin. And what made it as a big goal, really, a sufficient goal, was he scored it with his head. Right. And Trevor Brookin never scored with his head. No. I mean, he was a midfield player for a start, but he was like, how can I say, he's, he was one of those players very good on the ball, like a Glenn Arnold type of yeah, person. Yeah. Very sort of like, 
nothing quick about him, but he just seemed to have so much time on the ball and all yeah. that. Yeah. And that's the thing spatial got, awareness. Yeah, yeah. And he just got himself into the box on the edge of the six-yard box. Ball come across, and he, he sort of went backwards and, and nodded it into the thing. You know? Yeah. And um, for them to go on and win that game one 0 um, against Arsenal, which was a good Arsenal. Being side from time, Division Two. Yeah, very good. Right? And that's one of the sort of first FA Cup games I've ever watching. Well. Really? Yeah. God, quite impressive then, really. And they have got a bit of a history there in the FA Cup. Newcastle, of course, winning it this season. Southampton, we mentioned that tycoon takeover. Yeah. I mean, I'm quite curious to see the money that they're starting to spend already. 126 million. There you go, yeah. I mean, they've bought players like Giovanni Reina from Dortmund. That is a massive signing. Yeah. Tap Silver, 52 million. 50 million. 50 million, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to be careful of this because yeah. they're going to start building a bit of a squad at the minute. There's a few really good players here. Yeah, and they've got Oh my god, they got Ten Hag as manager. That's the Ajax manager. Yeah. That is insane. They've kept hold of James Ward Prowse. Okay, this is gonna be a bit of a challenge to try and stop them from <laughs> overtaking us. <laughs> but goals wise, then we have 22 goals from Santiago Jimenez, 16 from Jared Bowen. It's still not a big amount, really. No. 17 assists from Jared Bowen and the highest average rating come from Kurt Zuma. Any team that do well in the him. premiership has got to have one striker at least scoring 20 plus. Yes, absolutely. Right, let's have a look then. Season number three. So first sign. And I think we need some more legs at the back. Amel Ahmed Hozic is a very good player. We picked him up actually from Manchester United. He, he made a big move there in the first season. Obviously, he thinks that's going to be great. And then they decided to only play him once. once in the two seasons that they had him. I think he's a much better player than that and he's actually started all four games so far this season. Uh, 8.5 million pounds is how much I spent on him. Uh, and I think he's very good. 6-5. The only problem really is that positioning and some of his technicals aren't quite there, mainly because he just hasn't been played. But I know he has a good potential on the game and you tend to see him as one of the best defenders in the world. Yeah. So. I think he's a good move for us to bring him in. Now, Kufal has been our right back for the last couple of seasons. However, I really like this guy. And I've never really seen him much. So, Gabriel Zappa, an Italian right back, 23 years of age. He looks phenomenal. I don't know if... Let me know down in the comments if any of you guys have ever used him before. But his technicals, I mean, it's not anything he's bad at. A lot of 13s, 14s in there. And his physicals are insane. He's six foot as well. I really like his player traits, what he can do. Not only that, no, he is right footed, but he has a reasonable left foot. Yeah. It's very crucial to have that type of thing. Oh, yeah, just for, yeah. you know, just in case you get a ball in a weird area, they're not always cutting back no. onto their right. So he was trained at Inter Milan, but we picked him up from Cagliari. Uh, for £20 million. Pounds. And he's done a couple of good seasons Italian, there. Italian players, and the defenders are normally always good as well. Yeah, I think they? the Italian it's players solid. just in this game, yeah. there's so many that yeah. are really good. So I'm really happy to bring him in for £20 million. Pounds. We are paying him a bit of a wage, but I'm happy with that because I think he'll be one that will last us a long time. The only other signing we made was a free transfer from Arsenal. Uh, and again, another backup centre-back really in Daniel Ballard, who is Northern Irish. On the outs, we didn't really have any. We had a couple of lone guys and a couple of guys go out for free but that was pretty much it a very like bog standard transfer window we didn't yeah. get given that much money to be honest so we are sticking with the same tactic the only thing we're slightly changing is i want to lock in these three here mm -hmm. and just see how they do as a season like this jared mm -hmm. bowen i think is really good we need to score more goals we do so hopefully jimenez will start reaching that potential that he definitely has he's getting better it's just not quite there yet At 22 years of age i was Hoping for a little bit more. Uh, Zappa on that right back position there. I want him playing every single game. Julian Alvarez that we can see here is getting better and better. So hopefully cutting in on that right foot of his uh, will do us a bit of justice there. So schedule wise, we've played a few games already. Started off well, 5-0 win. Thomas Suchek got four goals. <laughs> Yeah, from that Mazzala roll. <laughs> Insane. Brighton, a 4-3 victory, and Thomas Suchek scored three goals. Seven goals. Two Seven games. goals. To, from a midfielder, by yeah. the way. Uh, Newcastle. Two, yeah. Uh, so two games badly. They've got a big sign in Alexander Isaac, who is one of those strikers that we are mentioning, uh, and a bad let me, loss. Let me just turn around. Yeah. <laughs> bad loss against Tottenham Hotspur. So we start off the season not too bad. Uh, we're in fifth place. But look at our Champions League group. Who in is in there? But PS PSG. bloody G again. I smell revenge. I smell revenge. How great would it be if us and Porto went through and we knocked oh. PSG into Europa League? There's only <laughs> one way to find out. Let's simulate this third season. And at the end of the third season, we've dropped down to sixth place. We're not going up, we're coming back down. Look, we're Southampton all up. Southampton. Yeah, so they must have had another big transfer window. Oh, we are struggling slightly. 
We are really struggling. 67 oh, points. Like, really. oh, yeah, they run away with it again. Another five points there. So they're doing all right. Tottenham seem to be doing really well under Bielsa. Yeah. Uh, it's very rare, actually. And I'm not just saying this because you're a Spurs fan and we've obviously seen them relegated in the past, but it's very rare to see them do this well. Mm. In the in the simulations yeah. and Arsenal dropping down Chelsea all the way down at nine. It's a big drop off from them. But yeah, Southampton is the new team on the block with a lot of money. Ten Hag is still there. They're spending ninety nine million pound in it's this two one. Two seasons over hundred million. Isn't it, really? What they're doing as well is they're buying like really good youngsters. Yeah. Zakarian, Aronson, Swenberg, and Alan Velasco from the Independiente. We know all about him. Yeah, we do. He was we? our best player there. Yeah. And they they sent. I mean, hundred seventy million if you total up what they signed there. Demiral forty four million from Juve. So a lot of money is coming yeah. into the club uh, or going out of the club side. Si. And they're obviously reaping the benefits of it. They've managed to finish in fifth place and starting to take our spots now. So, yeah, we need to be careful. But there's obviously other competitions. How have we done? Oh, we got to the final. Got to the Good final ball. of the Champions League. Please don't tell me we lost against PSG. What the worst thing about this is, Dad, is because we didn't win it, we don't go in the Champions League next no. year. But because we didn't finish in fifth, we don't go in the Europa League. And because Arsenal won the EC2, they nicked our spot of the Europa League, which means we go in the EC2. <laughs> that is the most annoying part of it. I hope you followed that. Semi-final loss so by Liverpool, Liverpool as well yeah. in the We're Carabao the Cup. Yeah. Let's take a look at the Champions League then. It was Liverpool. Oh, Liverpool. In a 3-1 loss, unfortunately for All us. English final though, might be for that. Yeah, Thomas Suchek scored the first goal as well. He got six in the 16th minute. Yeah. Mohamed Salah in the 35th, taking it to uh, on level points as we go into half time. And Naby Keita, of all players, got two in the second half. Really unfortunate for us, but they have built a bit of a squad. They got Lewandowski up top, and he only had a 6.9. He didn't actually play that well, but he is there up top. There's a reason why they're doing very well in these yeah, competitions. Yeah. So oh, we're just so unfortunate to uh, to fall at the final hurdle there. That's twice we've nearly made history for the team. Exactly. Uh, Squad-wise, then again, you're gonna you're gonna mention it because Thomas Suchek was our top scorer. 22 goals. Jimenez, even though he is getting better and better, he's just not scoring the goals no. like Thomas Suchek is from a Mazala roll. And if we take a look at the assist wise, 16 assists from Julian Alvarez. So, Dad, at this point, then, we've taken them to the Champions League final, but we're not in the Champions League next year. What are you hoping for the next two seasons with the Hammers? Just talk where you just said they were the Hammers. They've got more nicknames than the Hammers, you know? Yeah, I know Irons is always spread out. The Irons often. come from when they first started off. They were they were um, founded in 1895, and they were actually called the Thames Ironworks. Right. And that's where they got the, the, the iron... Uh, name from really and it was five years later they changed the name to West Ham if you go to the proper West Ham fans they've got other nicknames for themselves and right the, the football academy team yeah and have also the Cockney boys right okay but obviously that the, the hammers and the irons is, is their main name yeah. that most people know but they've got the other two nicknames that the sort of the, the proper local sort of West Ham fans sort of call themselves really I always used to the wonder team. why they they would always call themselves the irons because yeah. obviously yeah, that comes you, from their first name, well, their, yeah. their first name when they got founded, really. So it's one so. of their chants as well, isn't it? Irons. That yeah. They always throw yeah. Chant. yeah. So season-wise, so, then, what what would you hope for? Well, it's going to be an hard one still because if we don't get a goal scorer in, you just can't see us breaking into that top three. Yeah. With the teams, Liverpool, United, Southampton, by the looks of it as well. Obviously, the Spurs are coming through as well, by the looks of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, as long as we fifth, I'm going to go for fifth. Yeah. Okay. Get back into a better European yeah. competition than yeah. the EC2. So I think you're going to like this transfer window. First off, we have Francisco Trincao. Now, he's out, he's on loan at Wolves in real life this season, but he's from Barcelona. He's a very good Portuguese player, and he's got great potential in this game, which is why we can see a lot of 15s and 16s now at the age of 24. He looks phenomenal. Uh, we picked him up from Barcelona for only 17.25 because he has barely played and he wanted to leave. Three appearances. Two goals. Two goals. That's a good start. Already more than what he has managed to score since he was last in the Premier League in that first season <laughs> with Wolves because obviously they just never played him. So a bit unfortunate for him, but we're going to give him game time. Yeah. He's going to score some goals for us. A free transfer, a young striker, more of a backup. Don't worry, this isn't going to be the guy that I'm pinning our hopes on because yes, he is great. Lorenzo Colombo, another Italian 
that we mentioned from AC Milan on a free transfer. He did actually score 12 goals in 24 games last season for AC Milan, which is not bad at all, no, considering no, young lad. was good. only 10 starts yeah. as well in the league. So yeah, very good from Lorenzo Colombo as a free transfer. I'm happy with that. But there's more. Antonio Blanco was also a free transfer. More of a bolster in the midfield squad player. I like him. He's got some great mental attributes in there. Uh, for 24 years of age, he will do lovely. Centre-back, Mohamed Salisu Ooh. from Southampton. I'm going to try and steal their players. <laughs> That's the best way to do it, isn't it? If yeah. somebody's better than you, take all their players. <laughs> He's a very good centre-back, to be fair. And I think, like, although we've got Kurt Zuma... Uh, Issa Diop's not quite there. No. I think we needed somebody better. Yeah. Uh, so 25 years of age. He's got it all, I think. £30 million. He did play 22 games last season for Southampton. They obviously favour other people. Uh, so I think it was, it was a good deal for us to bring him in. But this is the guy that I think you'll like. £58 yes. million. Pound DCL. You know I like him, don't you? Oh, yes. I like him too. Yeah. So he's powerful. He's a very good striker in all aspects of the game. Heading, finishing. It's I, lots of like do you know when you look when you when you watch him play, he is like a West Ham player, though, isn't he? You know, I always I thought that too. Yeah, I really did. Yeah, he is when I West signed him, I thought I could see him play for yeah, West Ham in real life. Yeah. I really could. Yeah. If he ever decided to leave Everton, which you know he's not from Everton, he was, he was Sheffield lad, so I could see him leaving Everton yeah. in real life. Yeah. I would. I could see him in a West. And the Ham way shirt. the West Ham fans are, with they they, they, sort of, they sort of grab all the certain players, don't they? And yeah. really love them and that, you know. And then they just blossom then. Don't yeah. They? I mean, look and at Jesse. Really good to him. Look yeah. at Jesse Lingard last yeah. season. Well, you know, yeah, only as a loan deal. They loved him. Yeah. And he was fantastic there. So, yeah, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. I've got some big hopes for him. I like him a lot. So, yeah, let's see how he does for us. On the outs, we had a £30 million out. That was Julian Alvarez. Last deal, last year of his deal, yeah. would not sign. So, it was time to cash oh, well. in. Yeah. And considering we only paid £7 million for him, £30 million out, good, he's yeah. gone to Atletico Madrid, he has scored four and five already. <laughs> but still, I mean, he did He did a good servant for us. He got us to our, a Champions League final. Our league is a lot harder. Yeah, exactly that. Uh, we also had £18 million go out to Issa Diop. Uh, so I mentioned how I don't think he was cutting the mustard, so I let him go. And we had Aaron Cresswell leave on a free transfer to Werder Bremen. So there, there are the signings that have gone and come into the club. But so far, how have we done? Well, if you take a look at the schedule, we have played in the Europa Conference League playoff. We've gone through that on aggregate 3 2 over Ja Gordons. But in the league, we have suffered because we started off with a 2 1 loss to Arsenal. We beat Blackburn 3 0. They've man managed their way back up. But this is a big loss. Bournemouth. Against Bournemouth is a big loss. We so. Can't afford to lose those games. No, I don't know why, but they're playing at Ashton Gate at the minute. Uh, so <laughs> I think it's because they're building a new stadium yeah. but I did see that and I was like that's really bizarre yeah. but still there we go they're playing at Ashton Gate it's I'm sure far away from the I know there's like Southampton like yeah. Brighton they're all closer yeah. but still I, I guess they're all in the same league which is a bit more difficult yeah, to, probably, to yeah. do Southampton's probably building a new stadium with all their money that they've got yeah. so competition wise we are down in 13th place in the Europa Conference League we've been given obviously an easier group because we don't know a lot of these teams no. Basel's going to be the only competition that we might struggle in but Carabao Cup we've already been given Liverpool in the third round so we'll focus on other trophies shall we <laughs> So the fourth season draws to a close and we're back in the top four. Ooh, happy with that. Yeah. And the clubs that are in front of us as well, I'm not too disappointed with. No, well, they're no, expected no. to be a yeah, bit ahead right, of yeah. us. And look how much closer we've closed the gap to them as well. Yeah. 78 points to 80. We we're lost, a lot closer. We lost three games over at the end of the season. We as did as well, which meant we could have finished a lot higher. Yeah. That was against Southampton, Liverpool, Chelsea. But then we beat Man One end of the season, that is, by the way. Yeah. If you consider, you know, Southampton have the money now. To then finish against Leicester, Liverpool, Chelsea, and United. It's a difficult end of the season. So we've managed to do the job the earlier Liverpool's on. They've walked away with the league, though, haven't they? Yeah. 10 points. 10 somewhere. points you know, clear. They, I mean, we, we've seen, obviously, they beat us in the Champions League final uh, last season. We've seen how good they are already, some of the players that they have brought in. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. But other competitions now, we're in a lot of an easier European competition. I would be disappointed if we didn't reach, like, at least, least semi final, considering we were Champions League final on, season somewhere. before. We won it. Get in. But we all also won the Carabao Cup, Ooh. which meant we defeated Liverpool. Liverpool, yeah. So, yes, Get massive. But well, they did knock us out of the FA Cup. How do we draw against them again? Oh. It's ridiculous. So, we'll, so we'll we come first... from the league and won two spits of silver. Absolutely. Oh, Big season. That. Big that's season. Good season, yeah. We beat Chelsea, London Derby oh, in the Carabao oh, Cup even final. Even better. 2 1 as even well. Even better. So that's twice that we've won that. Tottenham got their name on a trophy there. They won a trophy. There is miracles happening in London. 
<laughs> there is miracles happening in London lately. Now the Europa, or the UEFA Conference League, there's all loads of different names in it. We beat Celtic in the final, so an all British final there. Ooh. So quite an interesting contest to find ourselves there. Yeah. Thomas Suchek was our top scorer in that as well. But Dominic Calvert-Lewin got a brace after five minutes, then was taken off after 22. Oh. Uh, they only scored in the 93rd minute to make it a little bit testy, but we still Thunder went damage. on. Yeah, we done we done it early. We got yeah. the job done very early doors. So fantastic season, I think. Uh, I want to actually take a look at our run there to see the the caliber of club that we faced as we come out of that group. So we then faced final. That's a difficult game. Yeah. Then we yeah. then we faced Frankfurt. Ooh. That's my club. Yeah, yeah. I trip Frankfurt. <laughs> we demolished them five 0 That's so, a hell of a result. Yeah, and then Club that's, Rouge. That's, that's a not, good result. That yeah. is a good result. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So yeah, we didn't we didn't face like some has beens or you know part timers. We we well, faced them clubs. well as well. I mean, you got to give the, the they beat Lazio. Yeah, they beat Lazio. Beat and, Lazio. Um, young, young boys. boys. Moscow's not. Moscow. A deal. No, yeah. they they had a good draw right through there to win it. Fenerbahce as yeah. well. Six three against Fenerbahce. So yeah, we did really well. I'm I'm happy with that. Massive and of the season there. Uh, goals wise, we signed Dominic Calvert-Lewin and yet Thomas Tuchek still scored four. How is he scoring 41 from midfield? I don't understand. I really don't. I'm trying to nail him down a new contract, but he keeps rejecting everything <laughs> because his contract goes out at the end of next season. I know that doesn't matter for us. We've already left, but it would just be nice legacy wise I'll to leave it what. there. He's a legend there, isn't he? He's got to be. Gotta be. Time, you know, scoring the amount of goals over those, the three, four seasons that we've had him. Yeah. I mean, look at it. In the league, he got the highest total of 22. Yeah. And if you take a look at the form, like, I mean, he, I mean, he scored seven penalties this season. Form-wise, he's only playing the Mazala. Yeah. He's not being stuck up top. He's playing the Mazala and he's scoring in so many games. But then that's it's quite that, phenomenal. It's, it's like you said, you described him earlier. He, he comes in late, doesn't he? And he's always... Arrives late. Positioning-wise, very, very good at it. Yeah. Daniel Braganka got the most assists this season. I, I probably think he's a set piece taker. He's very good at free kicks and corners. So 19 assists, quite expected really. And George Bello from the left back role, 17 yeah. assists from him. Gabriel Zappa from the right back, also 15. We got overlapping fullbacks. Mm. They're doing the job. They're getting yeah. the ball in the box and they're pinging it on Suchek's head. The, the difference is that we, I mean, we get Dominic Alvin Lewis in and he scores 28 goals, and all of a sudden we're fourth in the league. Yeah, it's a big so difference. We've, we've got a strike. We had the midfield to do it. Yeah, he's still got 15 so out got, of 31 games yeah. in the so league. We've got, a, we've got a striker in who scores goals, and bang, we're in yeah. fourth position. If you said like your striker over. scores one in every other game, you're happy, really, yeah. isn't it? It's yeah, a good, yeah. good amount to yeah. have. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's fantastic. I think that's a good season for us. So let's see who we bring in this final season for a big push to see if we can finish and beat that third place. Come on. So the first signing that I made was Frank Kesse, another one of the players that are linked to a few clubs because he was out of contract in real life at the end of this season. So there are some yeah. big clubs like PSG, Man United, all sniffing around him. He is a phenomenal midfielder on mm. this game. Now, I don't know how he was available to buy, but for £15 million, he was transfer listed from Milan. I'm guessing they're just yeah. not doing that well in no. Syria. And that's why they're starting to offload talent. He scores quite a few goals in that position as well. Yeah, I mean, he's an industrious midfielder. If you yeah, look, at he's a bit of a powerhouse. 719 for strength and stamina. That positioning, teamwork and work rate, all above 17. I really like Frank Kessie. Yeah. I'd love him to see him in the Prem because I think he's a bit of a bruiser as well. I think he'd be really good. So to bolster the midfield, to have a guy like this come in as our star player, and now he is, by coach rating, the highest rated player on our team. So he uh -huh. is phenomenal, but he's yeah. not the only guy we brought in, and it's another English talent who trained at Tottenham to begin with. Yeah. Now, I dare say you won't remember him at Tottenham, but Noni Madweki did come through the Tottenham Academy. No, I don't. He moved I'm straight probably, away yeah. to yeah. PSV. So he moved abroad and we've brought him back. So we can see here in 2018-19, PSV bought them off Tottenham and they started introducing him into the first team the last couple of years. I know in real life he's been tearing it up yeah. in, uh, in, in, in Holland or in Netherlands and doing really well. And he's fantastic on this game. I use him obviously in the PSV Twitch save that I mentioned earlier and he's very good there. What he's class at is dribbling with the ball, cut inside on his left foot. That's exactly what we use on that right hand yeah. side. So we've got a few really good English talents then in behind Dominic Calvert-Lewin. We have got, obviously, Jarrod Bowen, and now we've got Noni Madweki filling in those two roles in behind this is with where Dominic Calvert-Lewin. This is where we had to improve, wasn't it? Absolutely. So if we take a look at tactically, I'm not picking anything oh. because I don't think we need to. We've built a bit of a squad now. Yeah. But what I will show you is we go to the squad, you can see the assistant report who gives us his, what he considers the best 11. Yeah. What I am surprised with in this 
is Jimenez is the best strike we have compared to Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And I will show you the comparison if we go on this and have a look at Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin's in the blue here, so he's better aerially and mentally. But we can see, technically, attacking-wise, and vision is Jimenez. Yeah. So that's probably where he sees him as that. As a youngster at 24, he has that over Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Well, it's only four years, but he has that over him. And attribute-wise, it is favouring Santiago Jimenez. Ooh. I thought that was quite interesting. I yeah. wanted to show you that. I have also changed a couple of the roles in here. Before we had a DM role here, we had a roaming playmaker. I've changed two roles to suit the two players who are best suited there. This ball winning midfielder role is fantastic for Frank Kesse. He's amazing at it. But the roaming playmaker is not suited for Declan Rice. So I've changed it to a deep line playmaker and that's what his better role is. Yeah. Unfortunately, both of them are injured at the start of the season. Oh. That has kind of influenced our start of the season. We've lost the first game against Manchester United. We got our own back against Bournemouth, though, that 5-1 victory yeah. after they beat us 2-0. And Newcastle. And a big win against Newcastle, DCL scoring in the 56th minute. Yeah. So we've got our Champions League groups as well. Inter Milan, Sevilla, Copenhagen. I don't mind that. I've seen a lot worse. We've yeah. got a lot oh, worse. yeah, definitely, yeah. With the Benfica one that we had yeah, in yeah. Dortmund. So, yeah, Sevilla's obviously going to be tricky. I'd be disappointed if we don't go through to the next round. I agree, yeah. yeah. And I'd be gutted if we didn't go through the Europa League with yeah. only Copenhagen to overcome. We've been given Leicester in the third round of the Carabao Cup. Why can't we be given... You know, I'm, I'm sure. I bet Man City, Shrewsbury. I told Shrewsbury, you. There you go, yeah. yeah, they always get an easy one, do they? They, they forever get easy draws. Tottenham got Barnsley. Yeah, so <laughs> let's see then. Now, this is a fantastic time to see how we do, whether we can break into that top two, which West Ham have never done. And maybe we can do a good account of ourselves in the Champions League and win an FA Cup. That would be the best scenario. Yeah. So the final season, oh, you finished third. I mean, it's still great. It's still great matching it. Like, Do you know, it's the same two teams when we finished third last year. I know, year, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're nowhere near Liverpool again, so no. we can't argue. Uh, really. We are fairly Six points is two off. games, but look at, the, look at our running at the end of the season. Yeah, we lost if we two. win all five, we do match points yeah. of them and we have a better go to front, but it's it's tricky to suggest that, isn't it? Yeah. With the with the run of games that we obviously have throughout the rest of the season. So I, wanted oh. to, I do want to see past positions and just see where we have. Oh, we were second for a while. Yeah. We were said for a while, we did drop up, but we we were in top three so ever we, since. We'd lost it really December. at the beginning of the season, didn't we? Yeah, we had a few bad games, yeah, that's a few bad it. starts. Where I think the midfielders were injured. That could be a problem with yeah. us. And we obviously played like uh, group stage games to play well, Wednesday, well, Saturday. So we didn't get knocked out of the, the Champions League and that's why we started playing well because obviously we weren't playing so many games. Well, there's only one way to find out. We were the runner up oh, again. No. Mm. Champions League runners up twice with West Ham but we did win the Carabao Cup for the right. third That's time yeah, for the third I'll, time I'll take that. I'll, I'll we're take back it, to but... back winners and we beat Liverpool again in the final so that's fantastic a great result against them I mean, it's, it's good for the fans another trip to Wembley and a bit of silverware but oh, yeah. when you lose the finals it, you know the, the big ones as well that's that's the gutted ones isn't it absolutely we had a Joe Gomez own goal in the 7th minute and Francisco Trincao secured it with a 75th minute win we were the better team in what looks like it was a very boring final yeah. with only 17 shots in total uh, against a very good Liverpool side that we've already seen yeah, we but it's the, the Champions final? League we want to we see to? yes oh, <laughs> oh no. no penalties as well that's penalties. even worse losing on penalties isn't it it is even worse. I mean, we were very lucky to take it to extra time because a 91st minute Jared Bowen goal took it to to extra, extra time, time yeah. uh, after Bruno and Jaden Sancho got an early then we goals. Ahead, then. then we went ahead with Thomas Suchek and it was a Mason Greenwood 114th equaliser. But who missed the penalties? It was Bowen and it was Blanco. And they managed to beat us in the end four goals to three. That Blanco miss guaranteed them to win. They didn't even have to take their fifth. I think what's surprising as well is the boys that actually scored the penalties look, are all players that are there now. Other than Madweki. No, for Man United. Oh, for Man United, yeah. 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 It's all the same players that you still got. They've there kept now, the same it? players. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they. St yeah, Ernesto Valverde. They yeah. don't start with Ranić at the club uh, at the start of this database. They obviously don't have Solskjaer either. Did you see who your key player was for Man United, though? Kylian Mbappe. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell's <laughs> happened there? Oh, that's why they've been doing so well. They got him first season. Yeah. And he's been doing phenomenal. Yeah, so the goals he scored. Look. Yeah, that's not surprising. Did he even play against us in the final? That's quite interesting. Uh, he didn't. 
Sun. He did not play against us in the final. They also have Andre Silva up top as well. Yeah. So he must have been injured at the end of the end of the uh, season there and missed out. They've got an incredible team though. Some of the players that uh, I can see down this list, I just know are amazing hence, football manager. Hence why they were winning the league, then wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, even their goalkeeper is a player that we always try and sign in Onana. Julian Weig was fantastic in the game. Andre Silva's great. And Greece is a fantastic centre midfielder. So we're, we're really lucky, to be honest, but we've done so well to get there. I think. I do want to see. Feel, I think we've done really, really well. We've, we've hit I, third I twice. Do, yeah. We won a bit of silverware and we got to two Champions League finals. I think that's good. Not bad at all. I think the Hammers fans are really happy well, yeah. with that. Look at the teams we overcame as well to get to the final Real Madrid. Real Madrid on penalties. Liverpool 3 1 victory. It was an all oh, English semi final. -final yeah. All English semi final. It's very rare it happens. It's happened a couple of times. Yeah. But it is very it rare is it happens, when, it happens when, when it's it. all from one nation. It's even better when it's obviously yeah. from England. Look at Man United at 8 4. What a game that must have been. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, really unfortunate for us to actually come against them. They obviously are very overpowered in this season. But yeah, West Ham fans, I want to know your thoughts. Do you really like how we've managed to take your club there? I mean, I Santiago Jimenez, we Sweet finally up. had a striker who wasn't Suchek uh, with the top scorer. Four goals, yeah. Yeah, they put his face... Ooh, he looks fantastic now. Yeah. It just, it's just a shame. He's 25. He probably is now the striker we needed two seasons ago. Yeah. Uh, maybe a couple of more years and we would, we would do it because mm. we've got a lot of youngsters here who still have a little bit to go in their careers and add on to it but yeah letting us know down in the comments what your thoughts are of course keep the suggestions coming in and dad that like target reminder 1200 1200 yeah. make sure you can get that for us i think we might be ever so close to 30,000 subscribers when this comes Go out on, we, we we're recording it about a week before on, but if we keep on going we yeah. might be at it come so on. take a look get us to 30,000 hope you've had a happy new year Thank you very much, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.